So last night, I was looking at my Strava profile, as you do of an evening, and realized I've done 1,000 kilometers already on my giant TCR custom build. I don't know where the time has gone at all, being that busy the last few weeks. So you might see my video on this build, where the frame, the group set, the wheels, and all the other components came together really nicely, thanks to a build by my local bike shop, Ride 24-7. And if you missed that video, it's up there, linked above, so you can go and check it out. Definitely worth a watch, really pleased with how it came out, and lots of very nice comments on it. So it's probably a good time then to give my first ride impressions of this bike, what I've loved, what I've not loved, and generally how it's been to live with as my daily bike. So let's dive in. The first thing that struck me about this bike is how good it was to be back on a TCR Advanced. You might have seen my review of the mid-level bike last year with the old Tegra group set and the power meter. Did two or three videos, huge response to those videos. I know lots of you bought bikes based on that review, which really means a lot to me and quite humbling. And the bike I was really impressed with and racked up three and a half thousand kilometers. And I've ridden lots of nice bikes since then and some very exotic bikes as well, like Bianchi's, Carnago's, Villiers as well. So I've been spoiled for choice. But getting back on this bike, I was reminded instantly how good the TCR was I rode last year and how good it was to be back on this bike. And everything I enjoyed about that bike came flooding back. The way this bike rides is simply sensational. And a real reminder of why I liked that bike I reviewed last year so much. And it's so good to be back on a TCR. I really enjoyed it last year and I'm enjoying it even more now in this custom build. It's such a nice riding bike. And the TCR hasn't changed in my view, or my view of it hasn't changed considering some of the nice bikes I've ridden. And I think it's a combination of a smoothness. The compliance of the frame offers is just out of the world, better than many endurance bikes I've rode in the past and shows just how good road race frames have become helped by wide tuber tires as well. But that's not the only factor in how the bike rides. I've got to talk about how the bike looks because there were quite a few negative comments about the bike I rode last year in the subdued black and white decals. But this custom frame option has a sensational paint job, it has to be said, with a fantastic green purple fade with a bit of glitter in there as well. Really sparkles on a sunny day. You catch it from a different angle, you get different color. And then understated black logos, just giant on the down tube, TCR on the top tube. So very laid back, pared back, and I really like that about this bike. Because Giants in the past, if fair to say, haven't had the best looking frame paint jobs, but this one definitely bucks the trend. And I've had loads and loads of comments about how good this bike looks. And it's definitely up there with brands you would definitely put in that category of really good paint jobs and really smart finishes which Giant haven't always um, deserved to be in, but now they definitely do. So top work Giant, keep this up. I like this trend a lot. So if you watched that build video, you'll have seen how nicely the bike went together. And filming the mechanic at Ride 24 seven was a joy to see an expert at work and the bike came together really well. And really is a sign how good modern bikes are and components with no compatibility issues on this bike. Everything just plugged into place really nicely. And from that first ride to my last ride yesterday, the bike has been silky smooth. No squeaks or rattles, nothing coming loose. Just a sign that the bike is really well built using really good components that haven't let me down at all. So I chose the mid-range TCR Advanced Pro Disc frame set over the higher end and lighter SL frame because I like the price and the weight balance of this one. About 850 grams, and 1,600 pounds. So a really good weight for the price compared to other brands, which charge a lot more and aren't much lighter. And I don't mind the separate seat post compared to the integrated seat mast on the SL. And I don't mind the external cable routing on this bike. Now the cable routing on a giant TCR caused a lot of debate on my previous review. And I don't mind it to be honest. I don't mind the external cable routing. Although I must admit, internal cable routing does look clean if you're not building a bike yourself. That bike I rode last year had a mechanical Ultegra group set, a really good group set that I really, really like, but it did have a lot of cable outside of the frame. So going to the SRAM wireless, I have two hoses outside of the frame and they're both on a non-drive side. 
So from your side, from the dry side, you can't see too much exposed external rooting there. So much cleaner. And it's nicely rooted into a down tube and a fork. So for me, that works. Internal cable routing might be nicer, but I don't mind it. And it means I have a normal stem and a handlebar. So let me go through the components one by one, checking my verdict on them so far, starting with the handlebar and stem. Now Giant, annoyingly perhaps, use an overdrive to increase diameter steering tube for extra stiffness and lower weight, but it does limit your stem options. Now thankfully, Giant does a nice line of stems, and that one on the test bike last year actually looked really nice and suited the frame quite well. But I was keen to try something else, and Zip came forward with their offering of this service course SL aluminium stem in the oversized option, one of the few options on the market. I think Richie do one as well. So a nice angular looking stem, slammed of course, well, a small spacer, but I like the geometry of the bike. I can deal with the kind of more aggressive lower front end of a race bike for the most part these days. So nice and slammed, no space on the top, so very, very clean. And then I've got a Zip service course SL handlebar, aluminium, because the weight benefits of carbon over aluminium aren't often always worth the extra price, although the damping qualities of carbon can be a factor as well. But a ride quality, as I'll talk about later, is really good on this bike, so aluminium works really well. Nice oversized top section. I do prefer a round handlebar to an aero. I don't mind giving up a few watts for the ergonomics of a round handlebar. And then I wrap some supercast bar tape. Well, I didn't, the mechanic did. Some supercast bar tape around the handlebar. Really nice, grippy, nicely padded, and it's great to wear out gloves because I don't like riding with gloves in the summer. I know it's risky if I crash and stuff, but I like the feel of no gloves, and the bar tape definitely increases the feel. So that's the front end. Let's go to the back, and I've been trying this Physique versus Evo adaptive saddle. It's their version of a 3D printed saddle. Similar technology to that specialized power mirror saddle I rode last year, link above if you missed that. Using the same technology from a Silicon Valley based company. It's a really cool, funky looking saddle with its honeycomb structure, a channel down the middle for pressure relief and carbon rails to save a bit of weight. And I have to say, I've been really, really impressed with it. I'm usually a fan of shorter, stubby nose saddles, but I'm liking the shape of the saddle and it works really well for me. But we'll do a separate, more in depth video on a saddle very soon, so make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want to see that. So, state-of-the-art saddle on a state-of-the-art bike. And then onto the group set, and we have SRAM's latest rival ETAP Axis group set, which brings all their wireless 12-speed technology from Red and Force down to a much more affordable price point. It looks really good as well. I like the look of the cranks, the rear mech, front mech, and my favorite feature are actually the hoods, because they're a tiny bit smaller I fit my hands around a bit more easily than red and fourth, although you lose some of the adjustment and the blip support. But it looks like there are rumors around a wireless blip option becoming available. I would like some blips on the tops as I had in that Trek to Marnie um, last year as well. So I'm loving the ergonomics. The hoods feel really nice. The brake loose feel good in the hands, and I love the shifting layout, uh, left, right, and both together for the front mech. So I like the way it works. 12 speed, like red and fourth. Smaller chain rings, which look a bit odd perhaps but all the range I need for my local heels and going flat out as fast as I can, which is not that fast anymore, but it still feels fast sometimes. So all the gearing I need, 1036 on the back there. I like the close ratio at the business end of the cassette. I don't have any issues with efficiency loss in the 10 tooth, which I don't use all that often, but I like the lower gears I get on the climbs compared to more traditional uh, group sets. And the shifting performance is flawless, fast, quiet, crisp, everything you want from a modern group set. The other downer on a group set is the weight, as many of you know, is not a super lightweight group set due to the use of alloy and other materials compared to carbon that you get on a more expensive group set. But we'll talk about weight uh, later on in the video. And then got a nice set of very flash NV Foundation 45 wheels. They're a tubeless wheel set, which I love. So naturally I've got a set of tubeless tires Pirelli P0s in the SL lightweight trim, and they are 28 millimeter wide. They really match the profile of the wide rims as well. A nice smooth transition from the carbon to the rubber. And the wheel set has been fantastic. There's a lot more detail I could talk about on the wheels, but I'll do a separate review on these to keep the video a little bit shorter. But they feel fast, stable and crosswinds. 
The free hub engages quickly. The tubers have been flawless. I have to pump them up like once a week, but that's all. Had no, no issues at all. Just been a lovely set of wheels and tires that really match the ride quality and performance of the TCR frame really, really nicely. So you've got that silky smoothness, which is a great asset on my local rough roads. And then plenty of stiffness for powering up climbs and sprinting for town sign names. Really good handling, fantastic geometry. And although it's a race bike and has all the performance you expect of a race bike, like really responsive and direct and fast steering, it's quite laid back at times. So when you're riding, just cruising along, enjoying the view, getting the miles in on a big ride, it looks after you. It doesn't require you to be 100% switched on and ready for a really sort of highly engaging, sort of nervous ride like some race bikes kind of feel like. You can almost switch off, let the bike ride for you, and the handling just works wonderfully on swooping, curving roads. You can smash it over like gravel, dirt, with a tube of tires as well. Every time I ride this bike, it just puts a smile on my face. And it shines outside the cafe due to a custom paint job as well, which I really enjoy. Now you probably want to know the weight of this bike because I know there are a lot of weight weenies watching this channel. So this is a size ML and without pedals or boss cages or mounts, it weighs 7.9 kilograms. But as you see it here, minus a water bottle with some Ultegra SPD SL pedals, a Silker bottle cage and a Wahoo Element Bolt computer and aero mount, it weighs 8.5 kilograms, which is perhaps heavy for this sort of bike in 2021 and the sort of money the bike would cost. And lighter would be nice, but I've not found it a heavy bike for my local riding. And I know lots of people do obsess about weight and I know why, because when you pick it up, the way it feels instantly puts you in the right mindset of how the bike feels and can really be a psychological boost. But riding this bike for a thousand kilometers on all my local roads, including lots of hills here in the Cotswolds because it's far from a flat, especially up around Stroud and Burford where some quite long hills and quite steep hills as well. The weight of the bike has never been a factor. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't rise slowly up the climbs. The weight isn't holding me back. It just doesn't feel heavy when I'm riding it. The only time it feels heavy is when I do that. But I don't do that that often, to be honest, because who does that? That's just a cafe car park bragging thing, isn't it? But when you're riding, the weight isn't an issue. On flatter, undulating roads, aero is a bigger factor, of course. And we have a nice aero shaped frame, the down tube, new front end, and of course, the wheels on the bike. So aero is important on flatter, undulating roads, and the weight isn't a concern. I know lots of people will disagree with me, and that's fine, but I'm just saying that the weight isn't a factor. I'm not trying to justify the weight of the bike at all. Weight wasn't a focus for the bike, as the rival group set shows, but the weight hasn't been an issue at all, so just putting it out there. But I'd love to hear your thoughts, and I'm sure you'll let me know down below. So that has been my first ride report on my very lovely giant TCR Advance custom build. And I'd love to know what you think of this bike down below and my choice of components down below by leaving a comment. Um, are you loving it or are you hating it? Or are there things you would change? What would you do differently? I'd love to hear from you. So being a thousand kilometers and in another thousand kilometers, which won't be too long, the way I'm racking them up at the moment, I'll give you a more detailed report and let you know uh, how it's been and what's gone right and wrong. But so far, it's all been hunky-dory and nothing bad to report at all. Anyway, that's all for now. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. And if you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you all again next time. Thank you so much for watching.